Hey guys, welcome back. So we're continuing our talks on Brian Hill's new Blade series, where recently when Blade teamed up with the Hulk, he was given the idea of forming an army of the damned to follow him into the fight against the Adana. So let's get into it. But first, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so coming back from our last talk, where we saw Blade answering Bruce Banner's call to help him out with an issue going on in the Pacific Northwest, we go on to follow Blade as he heads down to Los Angeles so he can get help from an old friend. And I do use the term friend loosely because the next step in Blade's plan to defeat the Adana, it involves him going to hell and building an army of the damned. So to do this, he needs someone to help him get there. And I mean in a way that's easy for him to come back because I mean, anybody can help get to hell, <laughs> but we talking about a round trip here. So to do this, he sought out the help of Satana, the devil's daughter, who also once upon a time was Deadpool's wife. And I don't know, it could be me, but it almost seems like we're seeing more Deadpool references just randomly popping up. Or maybe that's just my mind looking for more Deadpool connections lately. But going into this, all you really need to know about Satana is that her and Blade have worked together in the past, like during the war at the gates of hell, when a sorcerer named Necrodamus was looking to give Hell an advantage against Heaven. So the two of them teamed up with Ghost Rider and her brother Damien to stop this. But over the years, she's definitely stood in that gray area between good and evil, like the time when Doctor Strange arrived in her all new, all different Hell, and she tried to trick him by getting him to eat a piece of Hell bacon, which was practically poison, so that Steven would die there and his soul would belong to her. So yeah, with Satana, you really don't know what you're gonna get, because in the past, even when she's doing a good deed, Underneath, there's also a bit of a struggle because she's going against her devilish nature. But nonetheless, with Blade coming to her for help, to Satana, that's pretty much a clear sign that he doesn't have too many other options at the moment. So at first, even though she knows she's willing to help, she still can't resist the urge to tease him at first by taking Blade through the whole why should I help you song and dance. And Blade goes through the motions while also calling her out on her ego and she doesn't even shy away from it. But I like how when this comes around to Satana telling Blade her decision on whether she's gonna help him or not, there's a moment here where she tells him that he didn't even go to Strange and he came to her cause he's running out of friends. So Blade tells her, I'm not your friend. So in response, Satana tells him, beg on your knees and I'll consider it. And Blade doesn't even budge. And to be honest, I'm surprised he didn't cuss her out right here. But after this brief pause, she lets him know that she's kidding to where from there she goes on to explain the details of what needs to be done. And to start this out, first she tells Blade, hell is seductive in ways people don't understand. The fire and pain, it's there, but God-fearing people miss the point. Hell is permission, the kind of freedom that Earth could never provide, well worth the pain. And she goes on to let him know that she can get him there with a little bit of magic, but it's the getting him out part that's a little tricky. So to make this work, Blade's gonna need a tether, someone who's pure, someone on this side who he trusts, who also trusts him. So clearly for reasons expressed earlier, that person's not gonna be Satana. And she knows this cause she's aware that Blade doesn't trust anyone, but it also has her asking Blade the question, who actually trusts you? Which from here now takes us back over to Japan with Tulip and Rotha, where much like what we saw before, Tulip is still recovering from their previous encounter with the Adana. So right now, Rotha is just keeping an eye on her until Blade gets back. But while they're here, Tulip tells Rotha that she doesn't have to babysit her. And Rotha responds like, Blade said I needed to protect you. Almost like it's in a way where she's saying, these are my instructions, I've got to do this. So Tulip just kind of calls her out on it by telling Rotha she notices there's some type of paternal energy she's picking up from Blade. And we know that Tulip has noticed this for some time now, but right here she feels the need to warn Rotha about trusting Blade. Because for Tulip, the way that she sees it, that's what got her in the position she's in now, soul bound by the Adana, who punished Tulip in order to get under Blade's skin. So for Tulip, in a number of ways, she feels like she's learned her lesson from her past relationship with Blade and more recently fighting alongside of him. Because either way, you get too close, you get hurt. So now she's just trying to warn Rotha about what could happen to her because she sees Blade as a father figure. And granted, at first, Rotha doesn't even know what the word paternal means. And it's not that she's too young to understand, but it's more of a translation barrier. So Tulip explains it to her. But as soon as she does, Rotha denies it because she remembers her father. He was a good man and he died when she was a child. <laughs> but the thing is, Rotha, 
she is still a child. So Tula points that out and she asks her if she doesn't think that Blade is a good man. And Rotha tells her, good men have peaceful lives. I believe Blade seeks to be good. That makes his life more difficult. Which in of itself, that statement is very true about Blade. And even further beyond the traditional sense of a noble man trying to do the right thing, because we saw earlier how he uses his anger to avoid being mind controlled. And it just goes to show when Blade doesn't use his anger, when he doesn't use the evil so to speak, he's not tapping into his full potential. So for Blade, by not using the evil within and hating that part of himself, he's making things more difficult for himself than they could be. And this is precisely what Dracula was trying to get through to him while teaching Blade about his own true nature and how to unlock his full potential. Because to do this and reach the level of power that he needs to defeat the Adana, he needs to be the evil that he hates and embrace its power. He's got to use his anger. So when it comes down to the question of if Blade's a good man, the truth is he's still trying to figure that out himself. And I also think this goes back to what Dracula said about Blade's problem being perspective. Because until Blade truly understands what good and evil actually are, he won't understand himself and he'll never defeat the Adana. But in the middle of Tulip and Rotha's conversation, Blade barges in and he's like, the front door was open. Rotha, I need to speak with you outside, just you. And you can just tell by the look on their faces, like it's really giving dad vibes. Cause Rotha's just over there looking like, what I do? But the reason why Blade wants to speak with Rotha alone is so that he can ask her if she wants to be his tether. And there's no tricks here about it, he's straightforward with her. So she knows what she's getting into. So Rotha kind of thinking out loud, she's like, it's a difficult question, but it's a matter of many innocent lives. And Blade tells her it's a matter of all innocent lives, <laughs> all of them. So she just says to herself, like under her breath, perhaps a bit paternal. Just before telling Blade, yes, I will help you go to hell. Because now Rotha's beginning to see and admit to herself that she does see Blade as a father figure. So from here, they make their way over to Satana to perform the ritual. And she goes on to first tell Blade, since he's not actually dead, Hell doesn't want him there. So she needs to cloak him in death and it's gonna hurt. And as far as Rotha, no matter what she hears Blade do, she can't interfere. She must only focus on her compassion for him. And that's it. So Satana goes on with the spell. And for a moment, Rotha starts to respond like it's a conversation. And Satana more or less tells her to shut up. But it ends up working and painfully sending Blade to hell, where initially he finds himself at the Circle of Desolation. Which as far as I'm aware, this is something totally new. But we're quickly shown that it's this huge wall that's full of souls who are trapped in a perpetual state of desolation. And when Blade touches one of these guys, he can feel their pain and emptiness. Which on one hand, it's helping Blade do what he went there to do. But back in the world of the living, all Rotha sees is him suffering. So she wipes the tears from his eyes and Satana reminds her that she needs to remain focused so this whole thing will work. But as far as this circle of desolation and the souls who were placed here, this was done by a brat, the Collector, who then shows up shortly after Blade's arrival. And right away, he knows that Blade's not supposed to be here because he's not dead, which in itself just goes back to the idea of balance. So to correct that, a brat would just kill Blade and problem solved. But Blade goes on to explain that he's here because of disruption of balance, which has caused him to come seeking an army of the damned to correct an imbalance in the land of the living. And right away, Abrath knows that Blade is talking about the Adana. And at first, he's kind of like, why should Hell care about her? So Blade tells him if the Adana has her way, then she is going to replace this Hell with her own. But with hearing this to Collector, he thinks Blade's just trying to scare him. So he's just like, you know what? I don't have to hear this. And he just goes on to add Blade to the circle of desolation, cause he's not buying any of it. But out of nowhere, Blade finds himself being freed by a very familiar face, with this being the assassin that Blade killed back in issue one, who was trying to stop the Adana in the first place. And this guy's able to chase off the collector so him and Blade can have a moment to talk. And when he does, he tells Blade that his name is Draven. He's the guy who Blade killed and damned the whole world in doing so. So Blade's just like, sorry about that. You look like a bad guy. But next, Draven asks Blade if he's seen his daughter in the living world. She's of his sect and her name is Rotha. And right here, Blade says exactly what I'm thinking, because he's like, daughter, like how cults call everyone brother. And Draven says, no, Rotha 
is my child. And right there, it's just like, okay, we were intentionally misled from the beginning. So Blade goes on to assure Draven that his daughter is safe. But then Blade realizes that they can understand each other. So he's like, wait a minute, why is it that I can understand you now and I couldn't before? So Draven tells him it's because I'm speaking English. And right there, it's like, all right, you talking slick now, but had you been speaking English in issue one, you wouldn't be here in hell. But this also begs the question of if Draven's a good guy, then why is he in hell? And he explains the reasoning behind it because when he died, he wasn't sent here, but rather he willed himself here so he could get answers on how to stop the Adana. But long story short, Blade ends up asking Draven, if he brings him back to the living world, can he still destroy the Adana? And Draven's just like, with her growing power, I'm not sure. And so Blade's like, you know what, let me rephrase that. If I bring you back, can we do this together? And Draven tells him it's possible, but the catch is he'll only be a spirit. And this time, Blade has to listen to him. So Blade agrees, but he tells him this time, you gotta speak English. And just like that, the two of them head back, which also reunites Rotha with her father. And I mean, as a ghost, but nonetheless, he's back, which is cool to see, but I was kind of looking forward to Blade getting an army from hell. But hey, who knows where this could go next? And so now real quick, I wanna give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here, who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.